The year is 2012 and the classic series of Doctor Who action figures return to general retailers. As in today's episode of classic series Doctor Who action figures a history, I'm going to be taking a look at the sound effects Daleks range wave 1 alongside the Forbidden Planet exclusive Seeds of Doom collector set, the Attack of the Cybermen collector set and of course the 5th Doctor Castrovalva collector set featuring the Master's TARDIS this time round as a column pillar. And of course, most notably, this episode will also feature, finally, the one and only Sutek the Destroyer from the iconic fourth Doctor story, The Pyramids of Mars, a figure that we were very excited to see released back in the year of 2012. And of course, this is the first of two variants that we would see this time round sporting the Jackal Head and of course coming alongside some Golden Guardian Mummies. So sit back, grab yourself a cuppa, and I hope you enjoy yet another episode of Doctor Who, the classic series action figures, a history. The next Forbidden Planet exclusive collector set continues the format of having a companion alongside a monster and villain previously seen in the 2011 releases. Time round we have the third variant of Perry alongside a rogue Cyberman from the season 22 opening story Attack of the Cybermen. This time round we have pretty much a direct reuse of the Vengeance on Varos sculpt of Perry and of course a slight retooled variation of Cyberman. Even though this is the second time we have seen this sculpt for Perry, it has seen a number of different upgrades, and in fact the sculpt itself was originally intended to be Perry from Attack of the Cybermen, and there is a number of giveaways on the original Vengeance on Varus Perry that actually show this. So on the top of the figure, we do in fact have the inclusion of a hairband, however this has been painted over just your usual hair colour, because Perry didn't in fact have a hairband during Vengeance on Varus. However, on this figure, we we do have the inclusion of the hairband and it has been painted a lighter blue colour with a number of different dots on this. The rest of the costume does in fact pretty much remain exactly the same as it is the same sculpt. It has just been repainted of course quite obviously vibrant pink as opposed to the paler blue colour. And of course the belt has now changed from a red to a cyan blue. And of course there has been a number of different changes on the keyring as opposed to being yellow it is now blue and yellow. And also there is the inclusion of a yellow buckle that is not present on the original version. Another sculpting change is that we do also have the addition of a scrunchie on the side of Perry's wrist, which is not present on the original figure. And of course, moving up to the top, as you can quite obviously see, there has been a difference in skin tone on the attack of the Cybermen Perry. She is now a lot paler compared to the Vengeance on Varos version that also has the inclusion of red earrings, and on the attack of the Cybermen version of Perry, they are of course a pale blue. I do in fact like the Perry as seen in the attack of the Cybermen men set a lot more because I just think it looks generally a lot more like a natural person and the skin tone also looks more natural and the paint application on the face is also a lot better. Moving down to the very bottom we have your usual Perry sculpt and then we also have the inclusion of some pink high heels which on the Vengeance on Varus figure were of course a bright red and on the Caves of Androzani version they were of course a cream colour. So overall a nice figure and a decent variant and probably my favourite Perry released in the line so far. And now moving on to the second figure of the set, it is of course the Rogue Cyberman, which is very unusual because this is a battered Cyberman, as you can see, with lots of different paint application over it, green and other splodges. However, we haven't in fact seen a standard attack Cyberman in the line as of yet, and this damaged version has in fact came before a regular version. So the sculpt itself is very similar to the original Earthshock Cyberman, however of course the sculpt has been changed ever so slightly, so we do have lots of splodges around the sides of the face as well as numerous amounts of grey splashed around the armour as well. The chest unit is generally the same sculpt with exactly the same design. The actual boiler suit itself is also exactly the same with the same tubing details as well as the mesh around the sides. However this time round it has been given a major paint revision having a silver base coat and then of course some added textures added over the top including further green splodges and this unusual grey design. The major change comes at the very bottom of the figure as the moon boots have now been replaced 
by this lace-up boot design. Once again, the first ever time this sculpt has been used on a Cyberman figure, and it would later be used as a part of the B&M exclusive series, when we would eventually get a standard attack Cyberman released. Of course, this Cyberman does also come with his standard gun accessory, which is naturally exactly the same to any other Cybermen really, has been given almost a copper tint over the top, however generally the detailing does remain the same. Moving back up to the top of the figure, one of the major differences for this figure in particular is in the actual head, because we have a removable faceplate, which reveals a very unusual design underneath of what looks like a skull with a number of different wires coming off it, as well as some cybernetic eyes, and of course that all important 80s Cyberman mouthpiece, which does of course cover the chin. Now this is something that didn't in fact appear within the TV series, I do believe this was just cobwebs within the actual episode, much like the Imperial destroyed Dalek, they have in fact taken a little bit of creative license on this and decided to add a skull, which is very cool and very airy at the same time, however I do tend to display this figure with the faceplate on, I in fact need to blue tack that in place, it does look a little bit unusual and a bit bulky, however it works just as well. You may recall when I take a look at the Attack of the Cybermen Stealth Cyberman along with Sixth Doctor, I said it may have been better to have a set that was focused entirely around Attack of the Cybermen and was maybe a four figure set as opposed to only a two, and naturally I would imagine that these are the two figures that I would also pair with the Sixth Doctor, as the original set with the Stealth Cyberman just didn't really seem very interesting and if anything a bit lazy, so it would have been nice to see a four pack including these figures instead of them being split over two sets. Works just as well and two further nice variants to add to the collection. I often think that one of the main buzzes with the character options classic series line was that they had around 30 to 40 years worth of Doctor Who to play with. They could essentially release any figures they wanted from any era of the show and there was pretty much an endless possibility of what we could expect as the next set. However, very unusually there was one particular figure that every single fan and collector of the line knew that we would get eventually. It was just a matter of when. It is of course the Seeds of Doom set featuring the Crinoid. Now for those of you that have been watching this series for a number of episodes, you will know that when I covered Wave 2, which did of course feature the Earthshock Cyberman, Decayed Master, the Vok Robot, the Mummy, and Morbius, one of the main original plans for that wave was to in fact have a collect and build, very much like Wave 1, and that collect and build was going to be the Crinoid, and of course that never did happen, and we later got that sculpt reused as a part of the Claws of Axos set, as the Crinoid sculpt was used for the Axon. And now we have finally that sculpt used for its original intended purpose, to be the Crinoid monster. The fourth Doctor figure of the set isn't really worth talking about because it's basically a direct re-release from the one that came within the Eleven Doctors set. Rather unusual looking coat design, of course with the stippled design over it, a rather nice variant, and of course the yellowy waist coat underneath. It is a lovely figure, don't get me wrong, however there isn't really any changes, and he does of course also come with his green hat. The main difference is the accessory that the figure comes with. He has been packaged with this rather sharp looking sword, with the nice detailing of a golden handle at the bottom. It's a very slight difference and quite minor, and it's nice, I suppose, to display the figure with. The set does also come with two further accessories, being a closed crinoid pod, which does have a nice weathering effect added over the top, and a open crinoid pod, with kind of the root stretching out, probably to grab somebody or something like that. I love the fact that it almost has a damp texture on the inside, or at least it looks damp, so it is very nice, once again, to display alongside the figures within this set. And then we have the inclusion of the crinoid. Now, generally, this does have exactly the same detailing as the Claws of Axos Axon monster figure. However, of course, the colour palette has been completely changed from an orangey pinky colour to a much more natural looking green colour with a series of different shades all over it. And of course, these roots around the design as well, including a few longer roots. This time round, the hands have, of course, been changed to include this once again rooted design with a few different claws coming off this. And the same applies for the opposite side as as well. However, the rest of the figure is pretty much exactly what you would expect from the Axon creature, really. Some nice green highlights at the very bottom and a lovely amount of detail. And the only main flaw is that due to this figure being a greeny colour, that the articulation does stand out quite a lot. It is a black colour in essentially a sea of green, making it look very unusual. On the back of the figure, we do have a series of more roots and things coming off the side of the back, which is a nice touch and makes a good variation compared to the original Axon monster creature. Turning back around to the front, 
front of course due to this being a crinoid this time round we do have the inclusion of some facial features including the eyes the nose and the mouth and of course due to this not being an axon you can now have this actually facing the front way as opposed to turning it round you can have no facial expression which is of course more accurate to the axon monster so yeah a cool looking figure if you like the seeds of doom especially however since seeing the axon monster it's nothing particularly too exciting I imagine if this was a collect and build it would have been another rather impressive collect and build piece to go alongside the k1 robot and of course, due to the crinoid being anticipated by fans for a number of years, it is nice to finally be able to close that chapter and add the crinoid to the figure shelf. No year of Doctor Who classic series action figures will be complete without some classic series Daleks, and this time we have a whole range of classic series Daleks, however not in the format that you are expecting, because 2012 seen the release of the first ever wave of sound effects Daleks. Now these were essentially your regular Dalek sculpts, however with sound effects on the inside as the title suggests, meaning that we got the opportunity to see some of the previously released Forbidden Planet exclusive Daleks re-released for general sale in other retailers such as Toys R Us and other toy stores throughout the UK. Now this is the entirety of wave one of the classic Daleks. There is another Dalek within this wave which was a 2005 bronze Dalek. However, that is conveniently the only Dalek of the wave I never managed to get. Luckily I do however have all of the classic series variants. First classic series Dalek is a regular drone Dalek from the Dalek Invasion of Earth, of course in 1964, first Doctor story. Now generally this sculpt is pretty much exactly the same to all of your other classic series Daleks that we've seen many times before in the line, however with a number of adjustments. Due to this Dalek being from the Dalek Invasion of Earth, it does of course have the incredibly large fender. However it does have a slight alteration, as you can see the side of this panel here links directly to the larger fender itself, something of which that wasn't prominent on the original Saucer Commander Dalek, released as a part of SDCC 2009. The rest of the figure, for the most part, is exactly what you would expect with your normal 60s colour scheme, the lighter blue hemispheres. In the very middle we have your usual 1960s weaponry, with the inclusion of the dish on the very back, which has now been painted a darker grey colour as opposed to the shiny silvery colour. And also once we move up to the top of the figure, we have the inclusion of a slight alteration on the eye stalk. This time round we have a black band at the very top, as well as the inclusion of a silver end to the eye stock as opposed to the regular black. This has a black ring round it, along with a white pupil in the very middle. A nice variation and it's great to have a trooper drone Dalek to go alongside the saucer pilot. Next up we have another 1960s Dalek, this time from the Second Doctor era, of course Power of the Daleks, the first ever Second Doctor story. Once again the sculpt of this Dalek is exactly what you would expect, we have the darker blue hemispheres this time round, and the inclusion of the mesh at the middle point, as well as the inclusion of a standard Dalek gun as opposed to the 1960s colour. At the very top we have the introduction of a brand new style of ear bulb, this time in a translucent yellow plastic, and it is in a much more coned style shape, of course accurate to the power of the Daleks and evil of the Daleks props. Both of these Daleks do share exactly the same sound chip from the 1960s, which does of course splurt your usual Dalek jargon. This can be accessed by clicking the little hemisphere on the side. Daleks are the masters of all. Daleks will destroy all life. Exterminate. Exterminate. And I nearly interrupted it then, and you get the gist, it's basically just your standard effects with your standard Dalek voices. And now we move into the 1970s, with rather excitingly the re-release of the Death to the Daleks colour scheme only ever seen on this figure, as well as the one packaged with the Third Doctor a number of years ago. A rather exciting looking Dalek, very different from all the other Daleks, and naturally this one does have a few changes. Most notably, the machine gun has now been changed out with your regular Dalek gun, which is once again accurate to what is seen within the story, as some of them had machine guns and then others didn't. And then moving up to the very top of the Dalek, we have the inclusion of the more ridged bulbs, as you can see, over the smoother design that was seen earlier on in the classic series line of action figures, which I believe is in fact inaccurate to this time within Doctor Who history, but oh well.
The second 1970s Dalek is from the 1973 story Planet of the Daleks, which I suppose also doubles up as your Dalek from Day of the Daleks as well as the Frontier in Space. It's a rather lovely design, of course a much more darker colour palette, however once again follows exactly the same sculpt to pretty much all of your other Daleks. Most notable changes on this Dalek is generally it is a little bit more darker compared to your Genesis Dalek releases and also the mesh on the slats has now just been painted a standard darker grey colour as opposed to having a silver highlight and much like the Death to the Daleks Dalek the ear bulbs have also now been replaced with your ridged design. Much like the 1960s Daleks, both of these 1970s Daleks do in fact feature exactly the same sound chip which once again is accessed by pressing the hemisphere. As you can see, a much more vocal Dalek speech pattern this time round, a little bit more angrier and louder than the 1960s Daleks. And the final sound effects Dalek from Wave 1 is rather excitingly from the 6th Doctor story, Revelation of the Daleks from 1985. Now this was really exciting for me back in the day because I didn't get the original Revelation of the Daleks set, meaning that this was my first ever time to get my hands on this Dalek sculpt and very much like the Remembrance white and gold Daleks, I absolutely adore this colour scheme. However, the white this time round is much more of a whitey colour as opposed to your regular cream. Fender is split into two separate sections, having black as well as the white, and the skirt itself has got the golden hemispheres, which are incredibly shiny indeed, along with your general white base coat. The actual mesh itself is rather impressively also been painted white, however it also has a really lovely golden highlight. As for the weaponry itself, the gun is exactly the same sculpt to your other Daleks, however painted a golden colour, and nicely and uniquely this Dalek also features a golden manipulator arm, with of course the black ending sucker piece. The rest of the Dalek itself does once again follow the white design, however of course the main barrel section this time round is the gold colour, all of the discs around the side being a white. Then of course we have the dome, once again white, with the ridged ear bulbs at the very top, as well as a different eye stalk. As you can see this time round it is much more stumpy in its design, featuring a few dishes of painted white, and of course that very chunky ending eye stalk piece, which does also have a black iris. And due to this Dalek being the last classic series Dalek from the range, and the modern series Dalek in fact had its own independent sound chip, this one also has its own individual sound chip to represent that of the 1980s voice. Once again, clicking the side. I obey. Sound chip is to reflect the 80s voice which is a little bit squeakier and a bit more agitated compared to the previous sound chips. Revelation of the Daleks Dalek from the actual story was a completely different sculpt to this one as seen here. There was in fact a ridge section in the very middle which was only seen on that Dalek within Doctor Who history and of course that hasn't been reflected on this sculpt so naturally I don't expect them to create a brand new sculpt for one Dalek. However for those of you that like accuracy this one is a little bit incorrect. Overall, Sound Effects Daleks Wave 1 was a great opportunity for the less dedicated collectors to get some classic series Daleks to add to their collection, or even younger fans who hadn't even heard of the Forbidden Planet exclusive releases. Of course, by buying these Daleks, you are only buying the one Dalek. I do believe the recommended retail was around $14.99, and again, some of these Daleks have in fact then gone on to be rather rare. So it was a great opportunity to just be able to buy a singular Dalek, as opposed to dedicating a whole £35 to a collector set that maybe the younger fans may have not been able to buy. Overall, a great range of Daleks with some lovely variety of the classic series. There was high hopes to see a second or even third wave in the future. September 2012 sees the release of the Castrovalva set, featuring a newly regenerated Fifth Doctor alongside the Master's TARDIS, this time round being in the column design that is seen through multiple classic series episodes and has grown to become once again another iconic disguise of the Master's TARDIS. And of course the episode previous to Castrovalva was Logopolis, and a rather relevant quote said by the Fourth Doctor in that episode, in fact his final quote is, it is the end but the moment has been prepared for. And I feel like that is rather relevant at this point because the classic series line is starting to reduce in its quantity a little bit. As we can see we are already a number of months into 2012 and there hasn't really been many figures released. 
In fact, this is only the sixth release of 2012, if you count the Sound Effects Daleks as kind of one item. And of course, in previous years, by this point in the year, we would have seen a lot of releases. However, I think that this is possibly the beginning of the end for the line, as Classic Series Forbidden Planet exclusive sets really start to reduce in production, and we start to see them less and less. It is very sad, but we've kind of had the high point of the Forbidden Planet exclusive series by this point, and it's starting to edge towards the end. However, that is not to say that the Forbidden Planet line of exclusives is over, because there is still quite a lot of releases to talk about. However, they are just a little bit more few and far between than before. So firstly, talking about the Fifth Doctor Regenerated, this is basically a mishmash of previous releases that we've seen already within the line. So starting off with, we do of course have the Season 18 Fourth Doctor Scarf in all of its rather lovely colours, including purples and reds. Take a close look at the costume, we are naturally going to need to take this off. It is exactly the same to usual. However, underneath we do of course have the rather familiar design of the previously released Keep of Trark and Tom Baker. Once again, the same designs have been kept, including the golden question marks, the rather lovely looking waistcoat, and towards the bottom we have your burgundy trousers, and of course your regular fourth doctor boots, and to finish off we have the rather baggy shirt underneath. We also have the reuse of the SDCC Fifth Doctor regenerated figure that has been previously released. The first ever time that this has been used as a part of just a Forbidden Planet exclusive set and not a San Diego Comic Con release. Personally, I really do love this sculpt. I love the longer hair that the Fifth Doctor does of course have. Reckoners to Peter Davison, I think it is fair to say, from his first season, being season 19. And we do have some nice paint application of the hair as well, bringing out each individual strand. But as with the previous release, we do also have a little dent in there as well to make way for the scarf. We also have the inclusion of a tiny accessory, just to put into context how small this is. There is the Fifth Doctor's boots, so very small indeed. This is of course a tissue compression eliminated logopolitan male, so we do of course have the suggestion of the limbs along with the black cloth, and as well as the small little indication of the head in there as well. A nice inclusion, mine's kind of covered in blue tack because it is absolutely small, I don't want to lose it. I probably recommend storing this away, as opposed to keeping it on your shelf, because it is absolutely tiny. And then we have the second figure of the set. It is, of course, the Master's TARDIS in the Column Disguise. So previously, we have already seen three different variations of Master TARDIS, including the Computer Bank within the Time Monster set, and the Grandfather Clock and Melka as a part of the Keeper of Traken set. So this kind of is the final one to be released. That is the iconic version of the Master's TARDIS, and it is as exciting as it looks. It's a column that is rotocast. It's got a hole in the bottom. And it's basically a pillar. You spent 20 quid on a pillar. And it's got a nice bit of paint on them, but it's still just a pillar. You have a series of grooves around the edges, as well as the suggestion of the door where the master would of course open it, as well as a darker wash applied to the top of this to really bring out the ridge texture. And then of course at the bottom and the top we do also have these ending off sections, which naturally do also have a little bit gradient and weathering at the top. And that is basically it. What else could you expect from a concrete stone pillar thing? I spent 20 quid on this back in the day. The Castrovalva set is another example of one of those sets from the classic series action figure line that is more for the completists and the collectors, as opposed to the younger viewers that want some figures to play with, because this set is certainly one of the least exciting of them all. However, it is nice to have a column TARDIS to add to the collection, and naturally, a lot of people really wanted to see another Anthony Ainley at this point. That would have made a lot of sense. However, from what I understand, there was rights problems or something like that with the Anthony Ainley likeness after the previous release in the Planet of Fire set, and sadly we never got to see that figure. However, this set would have been so much better with a traditional Anthony Ainley as opposed to this figure that is still rather nice, but not that exciting. It is also worth noting, just in passing, that 2012 did also see the release, or the re-releases even, of Dalek Collector Set 2, along with the Age of Steel set. All figures have been released before, as a part of the Forbidden Planet exclusive series, or in the case of the Cybermen, of course, the Age of Steel wave from the very origins of the classic series line, and they were, of course, a re-release in a shop that would later become very important to Doctor Who classic series action figure collectors, as we have the first ever classic series B&M re-releases. 
November 2012 came around the corner and seen the release of an action figure that finally we've been wanting for so so long. It is of course the fourth Doctor villain, Sutek, an incredibly popular villain that did of course appear within the highly popular fourth Doctor story, The Pyramids of Mars. A figure that so many Doctor Who fans had wanted since the line originally started in 2008 and it is such a surprise that it took this long for us to get our first of two Sutek figures. This time Time round we have the Pyramids of Mars Mars set featuring Sutek with his jackal head alongside two guardian mummies. As you would expect, the two mummy robots, or a siren service robots of the set, are indeed exactly the same sculpt to the original mummy figures that did appear within classic series wave 2 of action figures, as well as the fourth Doctor adventure set many many years ago by this point, however with one big noticeable difference, and it is of course that they are coated in a rather special golden wrapping. Even though these are re-releases, it still does remain an incredibly impressive sculpt. You do have all the different details of the bandages running all the way down the body, including down to the feet as well, and lots of lovely detailing of dark washes that have been applied over the top of this to really bring out those details. And then of course the major difference is those golden sections that have been added to the upper half of the chest, the top half of the head, as well as the upper half of the arms as well. Overall a rather nice paint job on these, incredibly sharp, and that does also stretch around to the back as well where we do also have the inclusion of the red pyramid that this time round does seem to be a slightly lighter red compared to the previous releases. Unlike the previous releases, these mummies do not come with canopic jars, which from what I can remember of the Pyramids of Mars does make sense, considering that this is the Mars set, not the Priory set, and naturally both of the mummy figures are exactly the same pretty much. And then of course we have the Destroyer of Worlds, where he treads, he leaves nothing but dust and darkness, and he certainly finds that good. It is of course Sutek himself, this time round, with the jackal head. A really lovely figure, incredibly impressive, and it's great to have this on the shelf, alongside the Pyramids of Mars, Fourth Doctor. For the most part, the costume itself is pretty basic, starting off with the black skirt at the very bottom and the inclusion of the bright red hands. The upper half is a little bit more exciting, the inclusion of a number of different creases, along with the tubing sections on the side of the waist as well as the upper point of the arms, which have been painted a rather nice vibrant red. Above this, we do also have the shoulder padded sections, which naturally do also consist of a few tubing designs, including this ridged section in the very middle. The same does apply for the sides of this section, including a little bit of red underneath, and of course this same design does also apply to the back. The most important part of this figure compared to the second release of Sutek is of course the inclusion of the jackal head at the very top. And this headpiece does not disappoint, an absolute brilliant likeness to the character as seen throughout the story. Of course we have a lighter brown base colour with a series of washes applied over the top to really nicely bring out the facial details. At the very top we do have the very large ear sections and then on the back of this we don't really have too much detailing whatsoever. It kind of looks a bit like a wooden texture, like the wooden almost snout section or whatever you would call it. And then we also have the inclusion of the eyes which have been absolutely brilliantly painted, white base colour making them stand out and then the absolute icing on the cake is that green glow added around the sides really making them stand out especially with the darker colours around the face. Overall, the Mars set is an intriguing one because we have a figure that we've been wanting for a number of years and then we have two figures that are exactly the same and sculpts that we've seen before already just with a few minor paint changes and the golden bands added over the top. However, it makes sense to have two to go side by side because after all, they are the Guardian Siren robots as opposed to just a regular Siren War robot. My only complaint is that this is me really digging the barrel. It would have been great to see a Pyramids of Mars Sarah Jane. I think that out of all of the sets released within the classic series, this set would have been the opportunity to see that figure, maybe including the rifle that she also held within the story, because we have Marcus Scarman, we have a masked Sutek, we have a Jackalhead Sutek, we have a plethora of mummies, we have the Fourth Doctor, we have loads of Canopic Jars. The only figure that is really missing is Sarah. And we don't have her, and it's incredibly annoying. But who knows, maybe the B&M series might release her at some point in the future, reusing some parts. Possibly even the Gelf Woman sculpt, who knows. 
And there we have it, another year of classic series Doctor Who action figures. At this point within the series, I think that it is very clear to state, considering that flashback to 2010, it did take a whole two and a half videos to cover an entire year of classic series action figures. Here we are covering the entirety of 2012 in one 30 to 40 minute episode. So we are starting to see less classic series Doctor Who action figures. Possibly at this point, perhaps the attention on the line was going down and maybe the sound effects Daleks were an attempt to boost the interest having more Daleks released as a part of general retail sale in stores the likes of Toys R Us and Argos and other general retail as opposed to just being Forbidden Planet exclusive releases. By this point we're starting to see repaints of Daleks and of course the eventual release of the Crinoid that we did originally see released as a part of the Claws of Axos set and of course another variant of Perry and the Fifth Doctor inevitably reusing the Fourth Doctor's sculpt. So by this point we are starting to see a few retools here and there. However, we are also seeing some figures that we have wanted to see since the very beginning of the series, the likes of a Siren Sutek from the Pyramids of Mars. However, as we've now drawn to the end of 2012, 2013 was a very important year for Doctor Who. As we all know, it was the 50th anniversary. So do of course join me next time as a part of this series as I take a look at the 50th anniversary year of classic series Doctor Who action figures, reviewing the Toys R Us exclusive line of Doctor Dalek 2 packs, and of course the return of Sutek in the Priory set, this time with a helmet sculpt as opposed to the jackal head. And of course the icing on the cake, the San Diego Comic Con release of Ace as portrayed by Sophie Aldred, the 7th Doctor's companion. But until then, I shall see you all next time. Bye for now.